What's up, Internet? So welcome back to Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and today we're going to be talking about Bringer of Chaos. Bringer of Chaos is a difficulty mode that has been out for almost a month now, and I've been scrambling to find ways to overcome this incredible challenge. That being said, the people at the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 subreddit have been very gracious in reaching out to me, so the strategy that I will be showing you guys today was completely the fruits of their labor, and I just recommend that you guys check it out too. It's a very, very fun strategy, but essentially, for those of you guys that are on familiar with Bringer of Chaos, it completely brings up the abilities of your enemies to 90 and brings down the player abilities to an even 1. The attack frequency, the damage, and the HP of the enemies are going to be significantly buffed, and we're going to be significantly nerfed, particularly in terms of party gauge gains and chain attack percentage bonuses. It's really, really tough. All the old strategies that we've had will not work here in Bringer of Chaos, but you have to focus on the things that were not nerfed, particularly the fusion combos. So fusion combos, for those of you guys that don't know are going to be a literal fusion between driver combos and blade combos. So let's just say you do a steam bomb with a fire and water element. You can do the uh, breaks, topples, launches, and smashes, and that is what a driver combo or a fusion combo is. So the thing about the fusion combo is that there's a particular blade, a particular rare blade, that does very, very well in this scenario, and that's going to be Nim. Nim has a really cool ability called Synthesis Lore. It's an exclusive ability that I believe is only uh, shared with her and cross sets, and basically this increases the effect of your fusion combos. A fusion combo effect can be considered a damage over time, depending on which fusion combo you use. So in this case, the most popular strategy is to do an earth-fire combination, because Nim is an earth type, and then you can follow it up with fire to do a damage over time. The damage over time will increase every time you finish a fusion combo with a smash, so it is very, very important that you have that. Not to mention that that Zeke is a, uh, able to do topples on people with the Knuckle Claw, so for that reason alone, we're going to be putting Nim on Zeke. Also, something I also want to note is that she has Restorative Fusion, which will heal people based on it. You shouldn't really need it, but it is nice to have that safety, just in case something happens beyond your control and something slips up. So yeah, that's pretty much what it's going to be. The other thing I want to mention too is that when you're playing Bringer of Chaos, Poppy QT Pi has a ton of utility and options, so I highly recommend that you use Tora the majority of the time in this mode. When you're using the uh, t the poppies, you're mainly just using the other two for the modifiers, not necessarily for their abilities, because Poppy Key Pi is already really good on her own. The usual cycle of the uh, Bringer of Chaos strategy is going to be doing Poppy QT Pi first for the breaks, and then Rex or Zeke will follow it up with Mithra or Nim to do the topple, and then because you're playing as Poppy QT Pi, you can do the launch, unless Zeke beats you to the punch, and then Rex will use Corvin. Corvin is Rex's new smasher, and the really cool thing about the recent update is that Corvin and Elma are both very, very good additions to Bringer of Chaos, and makes the challenge that much more manageable, so we can get into that later. So, the thing about the, uh, Poppy Alpha and QT. I've just given them the mods. Alpha, I've given her the luck modifier, a uh, master luck mod, because the higher luck you have, the more likely you are to land a uh, break. And the more reliably you can land a break, you can do things like interrupt enemy attacks or set up your fusion combos. And then you have Poppy QT. She cannot give uh, she, not, she cannot be given a luck mod, so I've given her a Master Striker mod to increase her dexterity, since that increases your accuracy. If you guys haven't already tried it already, Bringer of Chaos is really, really difficult because it's hard to land hits, and the thing is, you need to have as much accuracy as you can get, so that's what this mod is for. The Poppy QT Pi built in question. It's pretty simple stuff. I've given her the Master Luck mod for the reason I said earlier, and I've given her Night Vision. Night Vision is extremely important because you're able to manipulate the in game time, and when you do that, you can guarantee that it'll be nighttime every single time you fight, so you get the full effects of this ability. That being said, I just highly recommend having Night Vision on as many people as possible, simply just because you're essentially wasting your time if you're fighting in the daytime, so I recommend before you do a challenge, switch it to 1700 hours, and then you'll be good to go. The other thing I want to mention too about this is that I've given her the AB topple for the special enhancing ram. The level 3 and 4 combos will share the same effect, so once the topple is set up, you can go to the level 4 and then immediately get as much damage as you can for the fusion combo, since she's a fire element and she will be the stage 2 of Nim's volcano combo. Now, the other 
blades in question is going to be Mithra. Mithra, you just want to have as much damage as possible. If you want, you could try to figure Numa or Ascended Mithra into your cycle. That being said, though, just more damage is always a good thing no matter what. And then you have uh, Elma. Elma, she's mainly just going to be around for the effect of Overdrive, since it lowers the break resistance of your enemies and gives you more damage overall. This is a really, really fun way to play around. But the most important thing to give her is going to be the Hunter's Chemistry. I've given her the Hunter's Chemistry because the sooner you have max affinity, the sooner you'll be able to have things like more accuracy, more attack power, and Eye of Shining Justice in Pandoria's case. Corvin, I've given him the Night Vision because you do not want to miss your smashes at all. Fusion combo up, since he is going to be an integral part of our fusion combos. An outdoor attack up, because damage is always a good thing. Next up is going to be Nim for fusion combo up, because it just stacks with her passive. And then Night Vision to ensure that Zeke will have a better time of landing the topples, since it only hits once. And finally, there is Pandoria. Pandoria is really nice to have, because Eye of Shining Justice can be very useful. And we've given her the outdoor attack up, critical up, and affinity max attack. You could change this for something else if you like, something like Night Vision if you really want to. If you're using Numa, Numa does give you the guaranteed 100% critical rate for all the characters, so you can easily substitute this for something else. It's, all, it's really just all up to you guys. Now, in terms of the drivers, the accessories are pretty easy to go through. Uh, essentially, I've given Tora Master Scope for obvious reasons. More break chance is extremely important for this. Optical Headband for more critical damage, and Noise Dampener for more of your cancel bonuses. So yeah, that's exactly what I've tried to do. If you want, you can also switch this out for the swimsuit, if you really, really want to. But yeah, Noise Dampener is probably the best bet for damage. Next up is going to be Rex. I've given him the avant-garde medal because you'll never know. Something could happen and there could be times where the um, the healing from Nim might not necessarily kick in for whatever reason, so I would just give this for safety's sake. Crimson Headband, Overclocking Bangle, both very, very important. With Overclocking Bangle, like, Rex is going to be able to switch a lot, and the AI becomes a lot more reliable, so you're going to see that he's going to be switching into, like, Pyra for the topple, then switch back into Corbin for the launch, I'm mean, sorry, for the smash, and then switching into Elma to initiate your overdrive. You want to make sure you have as much time as possible, so that's what Overclocking Bangle is for. And then finally for Zeke, I've given him Abyss Mask for more damage, Overclocking Bangle for more switches. He only has two blades to go through, but it's just very, very important to have that. And Overclocking Bangle is very useful if you're running with Overdrive, since the recharge times of your arts is going to be really, really fast. And finally, Avant-Garde Metal, just in case. Again, you want to be as safe as possible, and this is exactly what I'm trying to go for. The pouch items, pretty simple stuff too. You want to just emphasize more and more recharge for your arts and specials, especially considering that art recharge times were very, very difficult in this particular mode, so yeah, that's pretty much going to be about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fight against Cloud Sea King Ken in challenge mode, a very, very tough one, but a favorite in terms of people that like making build setups, mainly because of the fact that he is a single target, and if you play your cards right, he won't ever summon reinforcements because he'll be in a constant loop of driver combos, so I hope to see you guys there. Alright, so like I said before, before you do any of the challenges, you make sure that you set the time to 1900 hours to ensure that it's always going to be nighttime. The opening segments of Cloud Sea King Ken's fight are going to be very RNG heavy, because you want to make sure you can land those breaks and those topples as often as you can. If it doesn't happen, he's going to be able to free be free to do anything he wants, and we just cannot have that. So, this is going to be alright. We're kind of trying to get him in a loop as soon as we can. Obviously, we can't exactly get the um, the fusion combos just yet, but we're building our way towards it. I'm going to wait for the level 4 special. Okay, so not quite a launch yet. Okay, so now I'm at the level 3. I'm going to wait around a little bit for my level 4 special. And while that's happening, I'm going to go fishing for breaks a little bit more. And then Zeke is going to go and do a special, and I'm going to follow it up immediately as soon as we get that topple. Once the topple goes in, immediately do your level 4 special to get as much damage as possible, and this is going to give us a really, really nice fusion combo effect. And we're not quite at max party gauge just yet, but we're getting there. Immediately follow it up with a launch, and then Corvin's going to come in. Once you have this down pat, it's going to be very, very easy for you to build up. Okay, so now I'm going to start asking Rex to switch up to uh, the overdrive, and now we can get things started. Okay, just a topple. Thankfully, when you're doing the overdrive, the uh, uh, break resistance of your enemies can be very, very low. 
So we want to build up that as much as we can. For those of you guys that are unfamiliar with Overdrive, every hit of specials that we do is going to increase the counter by 5, and then the Driver Arts are going to increase the counter by 1. Okay, so this attack's going to go off. Hopefully a launch is going to be happening soon. Okay, not quite. But now I have pretty much everything that I need. Every time I inflict a break, I'm going to try to go for a level 1 special if I can. Uh, after this, after the smash. So as you can see, the effect of the DOT is increasing every time that a smash happens. There we go, level 1 special. And remember, you want to spam level 1s as much as you can, because it gives you plenty of meter, and it also increases the counter. You want the counter to be as high as possible to make this go even faster. Okay, give us some more overdrive, and go to another break. And that's essentially what this is going to be, though. We're going to constantly loop. You do not want him to have more than five seconds of not being in a driver combo, because there's plenty of chances for him to have some shenanigans like that Cloud Breath that you saw there. If that Cloud Breath goes off, then he's going to summon reinforcements, and we're going to have to do this run all over again, because it's very, very difficult to manage. There we go. Go for another launch. I think after this smash, I'm going to do another break, and then follow it up with another special. Now, I see that Pandoria is at full affinity, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Zeke to unleash Shining Justice when he switches back to Pandoria. Here we go. Okay, so now he's going to do Eye of Shining Justice. He's going to do a lot of meters. Uh, he's going to give us a lot of counters. And now, again, just continue step cancelling. You probably can't see it because Tor is so small. Okay, so now we're getting our way to halfway health, and we're almost at the cap damage at this point. We have 800, 873,000. And unfortunately, he resisted all the breaks on that one, so we gotta be very, very careful about this. Here comes a Cloud Breath. Break that as soon as you can. You do not want Cloud Breath to happen. Okay, so I see I have a level 3 special ready, so as soon as I land this break, it's level 3 time. Don't even wait for that to finish. Getting the special hits is much, much more important. Okay, we're almost at cap damage now for the dots. Oh, here we are. Now we got ourselves to cap damage. And now it's just a matter of surviving until the very, very end. So again, as soon as he lands, land that break. Go for that level 1 special. And I think this should be enough to give us another one. You could go for a Numa if he's at low, low health. But uh, we're not quite there yet. I'd rather just do this, play it safe for now. But that dot is doing incredible amounts of damage for us. As you can see, there's a noticeable change in that health bar up at top. And do another level 1 special. And again, this is a vital charge buff on the level 1 special, so we can see being we're gonna see the bonus damage all the time. Here we go again. Another topple. Yeah, there's a, there's really a lot to go about for this one, but essentially it just boils down to just going through the cycle of doing level 1 specials. Level 2 specials you could potentially do as well, considering that it hits so many times. But honestly, I'd rather just play it safe for this one. And you will have a Numa go now. Oh, no, okay, never mind. No Numa for us. That's fine, though. We got it done. And in 5 minutes and 17 seconds, or maybe a little bit more than that, but yeah, I, th I believe that is faster than my previous record of 5 minutes and 24 seconds. So that's, yeah, 3 second difference might not be much, and there are plenty of people out there that have been able to do this particular challenge in like 3 minutes, no problem. But that being said though, I feel like for a lot of people, even being less than 15 minutes is still an accomplishment for them, and that's kind of like why I like to make these videos, because there are plenty of people that still have to progress. Obviously, there is a lot of preparation and blades that you need to have for this one, but that's basically what it takes to beat Bringer of Chaos. Most of the strategies that we've had in the past simply will not work when you're playing in Bringer of Chaos. That being said, though, it is nice that Bringer of Chaos helps incentivize us to really look at our own parties and then figure out what pieces work and what pieces do not. And that's what's so valuable about again, like Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Like I said, the strategy that we used was the courtesy of the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 subreddits, and there's plenty of cool things that a player base can come up with 
board games like this, and honestly, that's what I look for in any good video game. So, guys, I hope you enjoy this Bringer of Chaos strategy. It is challenge mode, so this is about as hard as it's going to get. So, if you're having trouble playing Bringer of Chaos in the overworld, this strategy will make short work of things like Pernicious Benf, Tyrant Titan Kuradil, even Artifice Ophion, like, even though he doesn't have the fusion combo effects, but there's still plenty of strategies that we can look at for that one in the near future, so I hope you guys look forward to that. But until then, though, we're going to be uh, cutting this short, and I will see you guys in the next Bringer of Chaos video, whenever that may be. Take care, everyone.